Yeah, get one arm super big, get them really out of balance. Keep taking a W. You don't know. Good morning, Sophie. Keep taking a W. I turned in a paper copy of this to you. Yeah, then which one? The 18 one? All right. Do you have it for me? I don't. I turned it in to you. No, but I passed them back. Go and um, you have it. I checked my and I Megan, you uploaded the wrong assignment. I did? Yes, you did. You uploaded the wrong one. So please upload the correct one. The oh. Lewis dot sheet, not the Fruit Loop one, the Lewis dot one. Oh, okay. It should still be open for you to upload it. All right. How are you doing, Alyssa? How are you doing, Drew? I'm doing okay. How are That's you, good. Mr. Strauss? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. We got one more week, one solid week of hard work. Then next week, Tuesday, half the class we're going to learn, the other half the class we're going to blow things up. And then on Tuesday, we're going to silver plate the bottles. And then we'll take a week off and then we'll get back together, do some summer chemistry work. Uh, Why not? All right, so we're going to wait for the pledge and then we're going to get started. 
I'm going to hand back papers while we wait for the um, pledge. We got Keith, we got Chloe, we got Drew, we got Alyssa, we got Ian, we got Megan, we got Morgan. All right. So just a reminder, we're learning all this week. So RJ, don't party early. Okay. So your coach never tells you, hey guys, there's five minutes left in the game. Everybody just take it easy. You know, I've never heard a coach say that yet. So we're going to go over the lab first, and then we're going to go over the homework. Okay, so the labs are very good, but you know, we did everything together in class, so they should be correct. Okay, I did look through your calculations, but since we did them together in class, they should be correct. The only two things you have to answer was, I think number 12, why did you have to um, level the water levels? And then number 14, I think was your summary, okay? Now, I'm not screen sharing, hold on. I'm sharing the screen at home, but I'm not sharing the screen here in class. Okay. So when you do your summary, I'm still not screen sharing in the classroom. I gotta fix that. Come on, there we go. All right, so now I'm screen sharing at home and I'm screen sharing at, and just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, it's, I just hate like teaching for 15 minutes and then someone says you were muted. All right, so with your summary, what were the biggest results we found? In my opinion, determining the coldest temperature was the most important thing, right? So I would have included what you found to be absolute zero, okay? So we found absolute zero to be negative 320 degrees Celsius. I would have included your percent error Probably the third most important result was your equations. All right. So I would say those three things you should have cited as results. Okay. The fact that the water was boiling at 98 degrees Celsius, is that important? No, that's data. Okay. We want results are what you found out errors so you guys did a nice job on the errors too so um probably the most common one people put was 
not equalizing the water levels. So remember with the sink, you had your flask. We wanted to keep the water levels equal inside and outside, okay? If you didn't do that, Amanda, then the uh, pressures would be off, okay? Um, some other errors. So here's the beaker of boiling water. What was the temperature? Oops, I drew it upside down. All right, so your T1 So when you when you are trying to identify errors, think about what you measured. We measured T1. Okay, that was the T1 of the gas, right? How did you measure T1 of the gas? Where did you put the thermometer? In the boiling water. Well, what assumption were we making about the temperature of the gas inside the flask? Yes, RJ, that it was the same as the water. So that's a big assumption there, Evan, that we were assuming that the temperature of the water and the temperature of the gas were the same. So perhaps that's not a good assumption. We let it sit in boiling water for five minutes, but how did we come up with five minutes? We just pulled it out of thin air. So did the gas sit long enough? in the boiling water. Maybe five minutes isn't enough. Maybe it needs to be seven or 10. So that's a possible error. And then similarly, T2, what was T2? Sink in the water. So same idea, maybe five minutes isn't long enough. Other things we measured, the volume of the gas, right? Well, what happened if you let your thumb off the hole? Some of the gas is gonna escape, the volume is gonna be off. So letting your thumb off the hole. What else do we measure? The V2 of the gas. Well, that's where you have to put your thumb over the hole again and flip the flask over and get the water out. So maybe you lost some water. So those are five examples of errors that you could have made, okay? Do not put something vague like, oh, I mismeasured. Okay, that's too vague, all right? And I don't think anybody did that, but I just like to tell my students that when you go on in science, don't put things down like, oh, I might have mismeasured. Oh, I might have looked at this graduated cylinder wrong. No. Okay, they want higher level thinking. And this is the part that actually the science reasoning portion of the ACT asks you. They give you labs and they say, now analyze it. What could have gone wrong? And do not put. calculations okay never ever do that right because if you hand in your lab alec and you say here's my lab but i might have done the calculations wrong i'm going to say well take it back and do the calculations right okay it doesn't make sense to hand something in if you know the math is wrong okay just like um chloe you would never ever chloe 
write a research paper for Johnson and Johnson and say, hey, our vaccine is 95% effective. Or I might have done my math wrong. Okay. No, no one's gonna take that vaccine. Okay. So make sure that you never put that as as an error. Okay. Uh, but again, the, the labs were really good. I made comments on them, so so look at them. Um, and uh, you know, continue to try to write in third person when you can. Okay. So any questions on the lab before we go through the homework, Emma? Any questions on the lab, you guys at home or in class? Yeah, I put a question in the chat to you. Oh, let me check here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so there's a little bit of a problem uh, with PowerSchool and uh, Canvas communicating. Okay. Thanks, Celia. Uh, just send me another email, Celia, so I don't forget, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, all right. So your homework. So why don't you take out your excited Lewis doc, your, your Lewis dot worksheet. And I'm going to um, have you guys at home uh, do an example on a piece of paper and then you can just show it on your camera. And the people in class, they're going to do theirs um, on the whiteboards, okay? So, I'm going to start with the people in class first, and then I will assign you guys at home to do one to share. Okay. So, let's see here. I'm going to start in reverse order. So, Karen and Sotera, who L? All right, letter L. Right, Karen Sotera. Whoever does the writing, the other person presents. Okay. Um, Lars and Lily, letter H. Okay. There are two options for letter H, two H. Okay. Did I say Lars? I meant Mike. Mike and Lily. Mike and Lily, you have letter H. Lars and Evan, you've got letter G. Okay. Letter G. Um, letter K, R, J, and Jader. Okay, you guys have K. Letter F, Amanda and Finley. Letter E, Audrey and um, Maddie. And then um, letter D, um, Lily, Mike, and Keegan, you guys have 2D as well. So you have two of them. So you'll have one group of three. So you've got 2D and 2H. Oh, you didn't get one? Oh, just kidding. Um, you guys will do J. So H and J. H and J. You guys are going to do D. 2D. 2D. Okay. All right. So then for you guys at home, uh, let's see here. Alyssa, you have 2B. Okay. Drew, you got. 2A. Um, yes, on the homework, you should show every possible answer. So, Drew, you've got 2A. Ayan, you've got 1C. 1C. Celia, you've got 1D. Okay, Celia, 1D. Keith, you have one A. 
Megan, you have one B. Morgan, you have one B. And Sophie, you have one A. Okay. Now, if you need help, I can help you guys with Mike and Lily. So you're going to do two of them. Celia, which one did you get? Oh, Chloe, you had, I believe, uh, one D, Chloe, one D, okay, one D. And like I said, if you need help, I can help you with those. I'm, I'm also going to walk around the room and see if people need help. Wait, hold on. Okay. So how do you have it all in there? 
single box. Okay? And this is correct. Now, do the other option where you've got the rule of 12. Are you doing take one? Wait, then you have one double box. That's the next uh, yeah, I got my permit as soon as it snow started. So everybody at home is able to present theirs. Yes, Alyssa, you can email me your answer and then I'll bring it up on the screen. Okay. So maybe in about one more minute. I think everybody in the classroom is ready. Are you guys in Zoomy land ready? All right, we're going to start with uh, the uh, Ionics. All right, you guys in the classroom, let's have a seat. I'm going to stop my screen share. Do you need help, Drew, on yours? Drew, do you need help or no? Yeah, 
Okay. So we're going to start with um, number 1A. Um, I think that was you, Keith. Did you have 1A? Yeah. You just hold that up to your camera there. All right, so ionics, you steal. The fluorine has stolen an electron there. And so therefore fluorine's minus one, potassium is plus one. No lines, just brackets, okay? Thank you very much, Keith. That one's beautiful. Okay. You got a, you got a standing ovation here. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see, who is next? Was that? Is that you, Morgan? Did you have calcium chloride? We'll just go to you, Morgan. You're next. Wachowski. Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to, um, could you not share your screen and then I'll put share content and then I'll share the picture? Um, I'm not sharing screen. So all you gotta do is turn your camera on and just show your paper. It was on Notability, though. Oh. Uh, and it says only host, yeah, host can can't, share content. I can't, I can't give you, um, I can't assign you. Well, maybe I can't assign you host. Uh, no, because then I'm going to have to leave. Um, there was another person who did that one, I believe, calcium chloride. Oh, I didn't. I had a PI5. You had PI5? Okay. Yeah. Um, Morgan, why don't you just write it on a piece of paper real quick? We'll come back to you, okay? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Drew, which one did you have? I had uh, two hydrogen and uh, sulfur, I think. Okay, so we're going to go to 2A, okay? Go ahead, Drew. Let's show us 2A. So let's see, I think you got a couple extra uh, electrons. So you only do the valence for sulfur, okay? okay. So you should, you should start with, you should have only six dots or six dots from the sulfur, okay? You got okay. the hydrogens right. I will, I'll show you, um, I'll share my screen and I'll show you where, um, where to fix it, okay? Okay. So with the sulfur, you start with six dots. And then the hydrogen you had right with one, and then you are forming one bond, okay? Sulfur ends up with eight, we get H2S, okay? So you just had too many dots around the sulfur, but you had the right idea. There's a single bond between the sulfur and the hydrogen, okay? Um, okay, I get that now. H2S is an acid. Oxygen is in the same family. H2S is similar to H2O. Now, we use water. There are some bacteria, Maddie, some bacteria near the, near the thermal vents on the bottom of the ocean that use H2S instead. Okay? We use H2O they use H2S. But since the sulfur and the oxygen are in the same family, they behave the same way. But that's where science fiction writers, did you ever see the movie Alien? Yeah. Science fiction writers hypothesize that perhaps on another planet, living creatures use H2S instead of H2O. So it's not completely out of the realm that, uh, living organism on another planet might have acidic blood, have H2S coursing through its veins and shoots acid at you. All right. Uh, 
Okay, let's see. Ion. Ayana, are you ready to present? Okay. So ionic things are stealing. So the fluorine stole one electron. Oh, you forgot two dots right there. Um, and this fluorine stole one electron. And so if they each steal one, they end up with a negative one charge. The aluminum lost three, so it's a plus three. You just forgot those two little, you forgot little two dots there. Okay, so make sure you guys write down the correct answer. Oh, uh, let's see here. Let's see if we got. All right, I'm showing uh, I five. PI5, let's see. It's not my shirt anymore. Okay. Uh, let's see. I have to, if you're going to see the email once, I have to leave this Zoom. Hold on. We can't hear you, Mr. Um, Chefs. So for the calcium chloride, calcium starts with two electrons. The chlorine starts with seven. And so it's going to steal one. The other chlorine is going to steal the other one. And then we end up with a minus one for each of those, and the calcium is a plus two. Okay. So again, ionics have brackets. So then I think we got one more, the strontium oxide. So let's see here. All right, let me just bring that up, Celia. All right. So yes, the only difference here is that oxygen is stealing two. So it ends up with a minus two and strontium is a plus two. Okay. Thank you, Celia. All right, so the rest of them, I believe are people in class, okay? So I am going to
So, All right, uh, 2D, dicarbon tetrachloride. Ah, uh, Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Um, well, carbon and, or the carbon to the chloride are just a single bond. And carbon together, double bond, because that. Carbon, and they both need eight. So, yeah. All right. Looks good. All right. Uh, thank you much, gentlemen. Uh, letter E, SEF six. Go ahead. So the SC started with six and the fluorine started with seven. SC needs 12. And then the fluorine needs eight. So we just group them. And then that's the line group structure. No. Okay. So selenium ended up with the rule of 12. So this is the only option. Um, if you tried to do selenium with eight, it wouldn't work. Okay. So this is the only option for the rule of 12. Uh, letter oh, F. Good job. <laughs> iodine starts off with seven. Chlorine starts off with, or iodine, yeah, iodine starts off with seven. Chlorine starts off with seven. I or fluorine needs eight and iodine follows the rule 14, so it ends up with 14. Perfect. All right. So again, when it's on the middle, the iodine is in the middle, it's following the higher rule, the rule of 14. Thank you very much. Uh, phosphate. Um, actually, we're gonna diverge here a little bit. We're gonna go with letter uh, I. Okay. Letter I. Who's got PCL3? Did I not hand that one out? Oh, I did it? My fault. And just kidding, we're going to go in order. So, uh, phosphate, letter D, PO4. So it's phosphate, PO4, phosphate starts at five, it needs eight, um, oxygen needs six, it, uh, or it starts at six, it needs eight. So it um, starts at five, but to get eight, uh, it's got the minus three, so it's got the three bonus electrons, and then uh, those are added for the oxygen. Okay, so, yep. Um, you can also follow the rule of 12 for this no rule of 10 so leave that one up on the board there and i'll do the rule of 10 so the um when there's oxygen you should look for both rules so this is correct following the rule of eight but we should look to see if it can follow the rule of 12. um so we'll see in letter h we're going to have two options so um, you guys want to bring up both your boards? We'll do H and then we'll do J. <laughs> Which one do you want to explain first? All right. All right, so there's two different ones. This one. Chlorine and oxygen both have eight. And then on this one over here, oxygen has eight, and then chlorine follows the rule of 14. So when you see oxygen, look for both options. So we have the rule of eight, 
And then we got the rule of 14. The rule of 14 has three double bonds. Um, so you see the line bond structure with all the single bonds, but the other one is gonna be all three, three double bonds. Okay, thank you. And now we've got the other one. Um, this one is four, and this one is this one is level four and level seven, so they both need eight. So we were looking at them, yeah, like this. And we have all single bonds. Yeah. Okie dokie. Looks good. Um, letter K, sulfate. Sulfur Whoops. Start off six. Um, so this one is all single bond. They all need eight. And that's that. If they gain two bonus electrons. And then for the rule of 12, we have two double bonds between oxygen and sulfur. That's that. So uh, once again, sulfur can follow the rule of eight or the rule of 12. When there's oxygen, look for both rules. Doesn't mean that there will be both of them but you should at least look. And sure enough, there are two answers for letter K, okay? Um, can you put that one up on the sill there too? And now letter L. Nitrogen starts out with five, and oxygen starts out with six, and they both needed eight, so we needed only one double bond, and then one single bond, and we ended up with nitrogen. Okie dokie. So, um, can you put that one on the still next to uh, the sulfur? Are you using my hot glove to wipe it off? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone else, <laughs> is like it. it already had stuff on it. That's why I was like, oh, oh man. Well, uh, well anyway, like, everyone was like, is, wait, can you just wipe this on? Take a lot of I was like, <laughs> Anyhow, there's actually something I want to point out here. So, why does sulfur have two options? but the nitrogen has only one option. Nitrogen can only follow the rule of eight, okay? So there's only gonna be one possible answer, but the sulfate, it can do eight or 12. So you have two answers, okay? Now I'm gonna do phosphorus. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to screen So we already did the one option for the phosphorus. And that was to do all single bonds. I get three bonus electrons. And so I end up with single bonds with everything. If you have a charge, you should be putting it in brackets. Now we should look then to see if we can follow the other rule, the rule of 10, okay? Whoops. So we probably can do it by introducing a double bond. So it doesn't matter where you put your double bond I'm just going to put it right there. All right, 
So there are two answers for phosphate, Amanda, following the rule of eight or following the rule of 10, okay? So always look for that second option, even though um, Keith, in this case, um, I mean, in this case, there are two answers, but it doesn't always have to be that way, okay? Um, so let me show you how to use the rest of Appendix F. So we're gonna, so why don't you write down on both examples of phosphate, okay? If you don't have it on your homework, write it down now or write it in your notes. Put down both examples of phosphate. I'll give you a chance to, to write that down. So copy down the two options of phosphate into your notes. You know what I think we should do? We're doing we're doing really well. I think we should have like a baby quiz on this. Like I'm not liking the way you think. Look, anything baby is cute. You know, like baby koalas, cute. Baby kangaroos, baby right. chicks. No, we're baby. baby quiz. No. Baby no. quiz would be cute. Baby I'm baby. feeling it. No. Feeling it. Baby quiz. Baby. So, babies aren't optional. All right. <laughs> babies are automatically cute. All right. So, um, in a uh, this, oh, I already added it. So when you do Lewis dots, you must follow the rule, okay? So hydrogen must follow the rule of two. Um, carbon must follow the rule of eight. So you must do the rules. Try to get the right number of bonds, okay? So you're not required to get the right number of bonds, but you should try to get the right number of bonds. So when we look at um, oxygen, oxygen's in group 6A, it wants eight electrons and two bonds. So oxygen in a perfect world would have eight electrons. So you must do that, Lars, you must get oxygen and eight electrons try to get oxygen two bonds. Okay, now when we look at our two examples here, none of the oxygens have two bonds. That's why they have frowny faces there, uh, Alyssa, because they are sad that they don't have two bonds. Oh, but this guy does. He's got two bonds, so he's happy. So you try to get the right number of bonds. What about phosphorus? When phosphorus follows the rule of eight, phosphorus is in group 5A, right? Phosphorus needs eight electrons and three bonds. So when it's following the rule of eight, Jader, you need to get three bonds, or I should say you try to get three bonds. You must get the eight, try to get three bonds. So for the rule of eight, I would need three bonds. Does the phosphorus have three bonds? One, two, three, four. 
it has four bonds. So is the phosphorus happy? No, another frowny face. So although this top answer is correct, we have a lot of unhappy atoms. For the rule of 12, I need five bonds. I'm sorry, it's the rule of 10. So when I look down here, there it is, rule of 10, then I'm gonna do five bonds. Do I have five bonds? One, two, three, four, five. A double bond counts as two, Karen. So do I have a total of five bonds? Yes. So in this case, my phosphorus would be happy. So which one is the preferred option? The rule of eight or the rule of 10? Rule of 10 because I have more happy people, okay? So I really, uh, this is kind of a, like we wanna move away from like saying things are happy or sad, okay? That's kind of a middle school way of teaching this stuff. Um, Maria, you don't really want to be talking to your college professor and say, why does it do this? Uh, because it's more happy that way. Um, I'm going to tell you, here's the answer, Alec, you put on every chemistry test when you don't know the answer. This is your BS, your, your go-to BS answer. Don't use it. Well, we don't have any more. Well, we might have a baby quiz. Um, why does something do something? In chemistry, the answer is because it's going to the lower energy state. That's literally the answer to everything that happens in chemistry. Why does this do that? Well, because it's trying to get to a lower energy state. Or you could say more stable state. So when you're taking your first chemistry exam in college, Mike, and you get stuck, just say, because it's going to a lower energy state. Technically, it's correct. Now, whether they'll give you credit, I don't know. So, you know, we probably shouldn't do a baby quiz. Yeah. Because right. you know what's better than you know what's better than babies? Surprises. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can do like a surprise quiz, like surprise. Did you say one, two, three, all included? No, I just said no take back. See, there you go. You forgot to say one, two, three, all included. And then did you touch your nose? I touched my head. <laughs> Um, there's one other thing I was going to just point out. Um, so we put like dots and X's and stars, Lily, as a way to teach this stuff to you. Okay. But um, when you do Lewis dot structures, like in college, they just use all dots. Okay. So in college, it would look like just this. Um, well, all electrons look the same, okay? It's not like the electrons from phosphorus look different than the electrons from oxygen. It's, I just wanna point this out to you. So in college, they're just gonna use all dots, okay? But in high school, I use different symbols to help you learn, okay? Um, but then in college, they'll just do all dots. All right, Ion, so in college, just dots, okay? No stars or X's and stuff like that. And I wanna do one more example for you, sodium hydroxide, okay? So in your notes, I'm gonna do NaOH. I'm going to show you, but I'm just getting people, uh, people get ready. Ready, Drew? Yeah. All right. If Drew's ready, then we can get going. So here's sodium with one electron. Oxygen has six. Hydrogen has one. 
it is possible to have one bond be ionic and another one be covalent. Okay. So oxygen is 3.50 and hydrogen is 2.20. When I take the difference, I get 1.3. Oh, shoot, you can't hear me. That was from a while ago, I think. Okay. Okay, all right. So the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen is covalent. So that means I'm going to share. Oops. So the oxygen and the hydrogen share their electrons. So I have one covalent bond. What about the sodium? Well, sodium is 1.01, oxygen is 3.50. I take the difference, I get 2.49. So between the oxygen and the sodium, it's ionic. So the oxygen is going to steal that electron. So now the sodium becomes a plus one. And the OH group is a minus one. So this would be an example of how you draw a molecule that has both ionic and covalent bonds in it. So va. No parlez-vous français? That's espanol. Comprende? In German, verstehe. French, comprend. No. Does anybody take French in here? Anybody take German? Keegan takes German. Das ist gut, sure. Das ist gut, Keegan. All right, so um, the bonus electrons, they're coming from some other element, probably sodium, okay? So all those uh, extra electrons coming from somewhere else, all right? Any questions on Lewis dot structures before we uh, transition to um, hybridization? So hybridization is going to explain why some of these have the other rules, multiple rules. So hybridization theory it's going to explain why it follows the rule of eight or the rule of ten or the rule of eight or the rule of it's going to explain where all these rules came from. And we're going to begin by talking about how you form a bond. Okay. There are five types of sigma bonds. The sigma bond is a single bond. So when I use the word sigma bond, just think single bond. Okay. So there are five different ways to form a single bond or a sigma bond. We're going to cover three of them today. Okay. The Greek letter for sigma is that. Okay, that's lowercase sigma. Keith, you're probably used to uppercase sigma. In math class, they do uppercase. Okay, that's uppercase sigma. 
We're doing lowercase. So the first three ways aren't so bad. And those are the three we're gonna cover today, okay? We're gonna overlap two S orbitals. And our example is gonna be hydrogen. So we're gonna have two atoms, we're gonna have two sets of axes. And there's gonna be a hydrogen on each of them. So two atoms, two sets of axes. And one hydrogen is one S1. And the other hydrogen is one S1. Is that a what under the five? Yeah, I'll come over by you because I can't hear you. Do you know what it is now? Oh, I'm sorry. I see. Okay, it's example. Yep. So we've got a one S one. So that means I've got a sphere, right? Because the S is a sphere. And it's got one electron in it. Do electrons like to be alone? No. So basically, the two hydrogens say, hey, I've got an electron. You've got an electron. Let's share our electrons. So the S orbitals overlap. And they share their electrons. That's called a sigma bond. So that's how atoms form molecules. The atomic orbitals overlap to form a bond. What questions do you have there? Maria, you okay? Okay, Megan, that's one way you can overlap. The other way you can overlap is a P and P, like in fluorine. So just like before we have two atoms, so two sets of electrons. I'm sorry, sorry, two sets of axes. And I'm just going to do the, the, the <laughs> excuse me, allergies. So we've got, um, I'm just gonna do the valence. 2s2, 2p, 5, and 2s2, 2p, 5. Once again, we each have, they each have one electron that's unpaired. So it's kind of like setting, setting your friends up. I've got a single friend, you've got a single friend. Let's put them on a blind date. So the only difference is we're using P orbitals this time. So here's a p orbital that's got one electron in it. 
and then the other p orbital. So the, the, the place where they overlap is the sigma bond. Now you don't have to draw this next part, but what would happen if instead of being along the internuclear axis, what if it was like this? Are they overlapping? No, if they don't overlap, you don't form a bond. So if it was like this, it would be no bond, okay? So they have to overlap in order to form a bond. Okay, last example for the days. An S and P overlap. like in hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen on one, chlorine on the other. Hydrogen to one S1. So the hydrogen, the 1s is a sphere. And it has one electron in it. The chlorine, and I'm just going to do the valence electrons, is 3s2, 3p5. So if the p orbital is like this, nothing is going to happen. They will not bond. Okay, so if it's like that, they won't bond. The p orbital has to be like that. Then there's going to be an overlap. And if they overlap, then you form a bond. And what do we call the overlap? A sigma bond. So the first three aren't so bad, okay? How to figure those out. Um, what questions do you have on that, Megan? I think I got it. Okay, Sophie? I got it. Okay, tomorrow will be a little bit more meaty when we look at four and five, but you guys will do great. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a Kahoot. Um, so are there any questions on the first three?
I'm going to stop my share. Just give me a sec here to get the Kahoot going. Okay, I have to admit, I didn't try this ahead of time. No, that's a bad one. Oops. All right, here we go. We got ourselves a Kahoot. Okay, I'm going to do, do, do. I'm going to leave. All right, guys, classic. And we're playing for, you guessed it, element trading cards. We got a lot on the line here. On the baby quiz? You know, what's, you know what's even better than a baby quiz? A surprise baby quiz. Because everybody loves to be surprised by babies. Stop, if you try to pull a fast one, you better keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> surprise baby. Yeah, that'll give you a surprise. <laughs> I think we got everybody. All right, you guys ready at home? You ready, Megan? Oh, I'm going to put the pin in the chat here. Just in case you get kicked out. There you go. All right, let's get started. Nice. 
Hey, good job. The only thing I don't like is they didn't say all the S's and P's, but that's the way it goes. It's this one, but not all atoms want eight. Most atoms want eight. Almost. What? I just got lied to. Uh, I think that's. I think that's BS. I don't think so. I think that's. Because. Count the electrons. That's a hint. Count the electrons. It's got nine protons and nine electrons. If I hit skip though, will it actually skip the question yeah. or just skip to the answer? All right. So how many do the halogens start with? Six. Halogens are this group. Halogens are group 7A. Celia taking the lead. Oh yeah. Remember opposites attract. Who forms positive charges? Who forms negative charges? Non-metal, non-metal, non-metal. These three are non-metals. That's a metal. Metals will not bond with metals. Oops, I went too fast there. You know, I used to do this in high school. Oh. It's not quite verified. Which would alkali metals bond with? Oh, metals do not bond with metals. It's noble gases, right? No, noble gases bond I with nobody. Gas noble gases don't bond with, oh, Chloe. I can't do it. 
Did you just say they're the ones in the middle? That's transition. You transit from one side to the other. Remember, what letter does the alphabet start with? A. a. Alkali starts with A. It's the first one. Morgan is literally on fire. I hope you're okay, Morgan. <laughs> Uh, covalent is sharing, right? So a polar covalent bond is, oh, this is sharing, right? Sharing. Hey, everybody got that one right. Good. Well, almost. Rubidium, gain or lose. Just because he's got element trading cards, so he knows everything about rubidium. So rubidium is in group 1A, so it's going to lose one. Morgan's still holding on. Chloe right behind her. RJ catching up. Why does lithium lose? Oh, that's something good. We didn't really talk about this, but it's that one. <laughs> we were like, someone, we were all set on red. No. I said red. <laughs> Ion climbing. Oh, you should get this one. So the example we did, ionic bond, right? I don't get it. You don't get it? Like you're packing the base under assault, but like. Oh, the base is under assault. I, I can... NaOH is a base. We didn't learn about what makes a base. Whoops, I hit it too fast there. Actually, the S electrons are supposed to be over here. No, but the answer is yes. But that's not the correct way to draw it. The S's should be there. Uh oh. RJ. RJ. A little pressure here on you. You're the only one in class. Everybody else here is a virtual student. You got to represent. They're not. How could they cheat? There's not enough time to cheat. There's, by the time they would type it into their phone, no way. Hey, don't you listen to them, guys. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, I bet you this guy. Oh, 
I, I'm guessing it's I'm guessing it's that one. That's not right. But that's not right. They should have two. Boy, this teacher, whoever wrote this, isn't. None of them are right. None of them are right. I think it's going to be. Yeah. It's wrong. I know. I'm sorry. Because it the, the it should be written like this. The, you put the S's there, and then the P's go around it. So that's the correct way to draw it. Is it a metal or is it a non-metal? Karen, make it a comeback. Good job, Karen. Um, let's see here. How many more questions do we have? I think we can only do like two more questions. Guess what? Metals won't bond with metals. No. Halogens are right here. They're in the non-metal group. Lanthanides are down in the F block. All right. I guess this is the last question. So who won? Morgan, Alyssa, Sotera, Chloe, Celie. So Sotera, you get some... If you guys want to stop in and get your element trading cards. If you guys don't have any questions at home, you can log off. See you guys later. So we'll take a little break and then we'll get cooking. <laughs>